recent decade, it's become quite clear that China has taken the leading role in pushing forward mankind's space program. And their outlook for the exploration and development of space is no different than that of their Belt and Road Initiative for the development here on Earth. That is, win-win cooperation among all nations for mutual progress to advance the common destiny of mankind. This was exhibited quite clearly at this year's Global Space Exploration, or GLEX, conference held in Beijing from June 6th through 8th, where over a thousand delegates gathered, representing 51 nations, for presentations and discussions on mankind's plans for space exploration. At the conference, representatives of the Chinese Space Agency presented their ongoing progress in many areas three of which we'll highlight here. Their space station, fundamental science missions, and missions to the moon. Yang Li Wei, China's senior astronaut, told the conference that over the next five years, China will launch four more manned missions as it begins to build its space station and will also begin selecting the next group of astronauts who will fly missions to that space station. Construction will begin in 2019 with expected completion in 2022, roughly two years before the planned decommissioning of the International Space Station, meaning that the Chinese space station will be the only space lab around. In 2019, the first core module, Tianhe, will launch on a Long March 5 heavy lift rocket into an orbit about 390 kilometers above Earth. From 2020 to 2022, roughly a dozen more launches will put the remaining two laboratory modules and the required cargo into orbit, assembled with the help of several manned missions. By 2022, the 60-ton space lab will be able to accommodate astronaut scientists for up to six months at a time. China has been very explicit that their space station is a resource for all mankind and will be open to all nations, able to accommodate international scientific experiments and vehicles, and that China is willing to train astronauts from nations which don't yet have their own space launch capability. China is also taking major steps forward in instrumentation and investigations of fundamental science. First, June 15th was the successful launch of China's first astronomical satellite, the Hard X-ray Modulation Telescope, or XHMT, the first of four new space science missions. The XHMT carries low, medium and high energy X-ray telescopes, which together cover X-rays from 1 to 250 kiloelectron volts in energy. These telescopes overlap with the coverage provided by existing X-ray telescopes, NASA's Chandra and New Star, for example, but China's XHMT will also provide a larger collecting area, expecting to provide new insights into black holes, neutron stars, active galactic nuclei, and other high-energy phenomena in our universe. Second, Yang Li Wei told the GLEX conference that China will be launching a Hubble-class optical telescope to orbit in conjunction with the space station, with the possibility of docking with the station for refueling and maintenance. And third, Plans were confirmed through 2030 for deep space exploration to include the landing on the Martian surface, exploration of Jupiter's moon Ganymede, the study of the magnetosphere of Jupiter, of the Sun, and an asteroid flyby, landing, and sample return. We look forward to more detail on these missions in the coming months and years. And finally, it was confirmed that plans are moving forward toward a manned landing on the moon by China, likely sometime in the 2030s. But before then, 
significant robotic missions will be completed over the next 18 months. It was officially announced that the Chang'e 5 sample return mission will launch in late November of this year. The target for the landing is the moon's Mons Rumka region, a volcanic area in the northwest of the moon's near side. The Chang'e 5 lander will descend from orbit and automatically sample about two kilograms of lunar material, depositing it into an ascender, which will launch from the moon's surface and rendezvous with the rest of the spacecraft waiting in lunar orbit to be returned back to Earth. If successful, this will be the first sample of lunar material brought back to Earth in over 40 years. It was also reported by the director of China's Lunar Exploration and Space Engineering Center that the Chang'e 4 mission is still on track for late 2018. Chang'e 4 will attempt the first ever landing on the moon's far side, with a planned landing site near the South Pole to permit exploration of water and other resources in the moon's permanently shadowed regions. Chang'e 4's trio of relay satellite, lander, and rover will carry 11 scientific instruments, four of which have been contributed by China's international partners including an instrument contributed by the Netherlands, which will do the very first astronomical observations in the very low frequency radio range, something which is impossible to do from the vicinity of Earth. It should be mentioned that Chang'e 4 is not going to the moon alone. It will have some living passengers. A mini ecosystem of potato seeds and silkworms developed by research teams led by Chongqing University will go along for the ride, housed in an 18 centimeter long cylinder. The hoped for growth of the first non-human flora and fauna on the moon will be carefully observed from Earth via live stream. <laughs>